All right, in this video, we're going to work on another Fourier transform property here for the DFT. And uh, to begin with, uh, let's assume that we have these time domain signals X, Y, and Z, and their associated DFTs, capital X, capital Y, capital Z. And uh, let's, let's see if we can understand what would happen in the time domain if we were to take two transforms and multiply them together in the frequency domain. <clears throat> Normally, we would expect the time domain result to be convolution, so let's keep a lookout for things that look like convolution. To help us get going on this, I've written down the first couple of steps. So the time domain expression z of n is equal to the inverse dft of zk. And then we know that zk is equal to x times y in the frequency domain. Um, the next step in this derivation is to substitute for either one, either x or y, but uh, let's go ahead and substitute the forward transform formula. We have to be careful here not to use the same letter twice, so let's uh, say that this is m. Okay, um, so what I've done is I've replaced x of k with, the, with its definition as the, the transform of a time domain sequence x of m. Now, what we're going to do in the next step is we're going to pull out the sum on m and pull out xm because it depends on m, but everything else we're going to push through. And when we do that, we get something that looks like this. Well, um, oh, let's see, um, yeah, I think we're where we want to be. I'm going to put parentheses around this piece because that is equal to y, not of n, but y of n minus m. And that's exactly what we want for, for this to look like convolution. But as with some of the other Fourier transform properties, when we write this down, remember that um, we cannot evaluate y outs for indexes outside the range 0 to n minus 1. So we're going to slip in a modulo n, which we're always allowed to do because that does not change the value of this complex exponential. So really what we're doing is skipping a step here. I should have written this down one more time with n minus m modulo capital N, but I'm skipping that step and just writing that in this answer. Um, this is called circular convolution, and it's denoted with an asterisk with a circle around it, and then a subscript n on the circle to indicate that that's an endpoint circular convolution. We can do convolutions of any order. And so this completes the derivation of this property. So we see that with the DFT, the property takes a slightly different form. Circular convolution in the time domain corresponds to multiplication in the frequency domain. Um, in another video, we will explore circular convolution in more detail. It's much like linear convolution, and you can see that from the form here, except that instead of doing um, a linear shift, we do a circular shift. In every other respect, it's just like regular convolution, regular linear convolution. Um, notice here that uh, n is fixed, and so we do a circular time reversal, followed by a circular shift, 
Then we multiply everything together, add up all the numbers, and that gives us the convolution answer, z of n. So um, this is, uh, in all respects, like regular linear convolution, except that we're doing circular operations on one of these sequences instead of linear um, shifting and flipping operations. The other thing that's different is here where the summation is always over all the points in the sequence from 0 to n minus 1. We don't have to worry about um, tails and transients and we'll, we'll really save that discussion for another video. I just wanted this video to focus on the derivation and the steps in deriving this transform pair.